In this video, you'll learn how to create consistency with any character. From AI generated characters to characters you've custom made yourself. This is extremely useful for storytelling, creating books, creating your own brand, and much more. Okay, let's get into it. So to start off, you need your own character. You can design your own character from scratch, or you can use characters you've made using AI software. I found a character that I think would work well for this video. I found my character on this really good website called Vecteasy. There's a lot of really good free content on there. So I was looking up characters for animation, and I found this character who I really like. And as you can see, it's got the main poses here, as well as different expressions, so the heads are separate. It's got different bodies, different legs, different shoes, different hands. So what you really want is sort of a character sheet. Now a character sheet has the same character, but in different poses, with different expressions. We will be training a model, so that when we give it a prompt, it can look through all those images and say, hey, I need him in a running pose, or he looks angry, and it has those reference images to work from. So this character file is free to use. It does say attribution required. So I will say thank you to VectorNation for creating this file and I'll make sure to leave a link to it down below. So I took this image into Photoshop and I cut together the parts to create different poses and expressions on the one character. And I even did close-ups of his face. So as you can see, these are all the images that I created. I had just over 30 in total. Now you don't need this many to get a good model trained, which I will show you later in this video with my AI generated character. You can do the same with your own character. Just make sure to draw your character in different poses and expressions and keep a consistent style between them. Now let's train our model. The tool I'm using for this is called LensGo. It's a website with loads of cool AI features in it. You can do everything that we learn in this video with the free plan. With the free model, you get 100 tokens to use, and if you use all of them up, then each day they'll reset it at 50 tokens, so you get 50 tokens a day to use. If you want to generate an image with the LensGo, I believe it uses up two tokens. So if you go to training and models, here you can say train custom styles or characters with your images, and you can click on new model, and here you can just put in your model name, and here you select your base model. So if your character is based on someone who looks real, then click the real option. Or if it's a cartoon character, then go for the anime base character. And then you just drag or drop your images into here. It's best to make sure your images are at a 1024 pixel by 1024 pixel aspect ratio, as this just helps the training model. It's best practice for when you save your character images to name the files similar to what is going on in the image. So here I've named the character John and I've typed in John about to start walking. And for his faces, I've put John angry, John confused, John happy face, John happy again, John is confused. I believe it helps the training model. With the LensGo model training, it allows you to upload up to 100 images, which is really good. So I've got 34 images on this one. And then you can name your model and then just click start. And here's where you can take a little break as it may take up to 25 minutes to train. Now I'm just going to jump into my other account, which is a standard plan account where I already have some trained models. So as you can see, I've got John and this is my other character that we'll look at soon, who is Alex, which was created using AI. As you hover over the model, you can choose to create an image, or you can actually create videos with them with the animate button. So let's click on create. Let's have a look on the side here. So top left, you can see how many credits I've got left or tokens. I'm not sure what they call them. And here you can see your model. So each model leads to stink style and capability. So if you click on the model here, you can choose from all the different models that LensGo has available. Um, and my models are listed here, so I'll click John. And this number here is how strong you want your trained model to be to influence the prompt that you're going to do. So I've got a sweet spot of around 0 
Um, I like to kind of keep the aspect ratio at one to one at the moment. I found the results are pretty good for that. But you can change the aspect ratio to however you want. And here you can select the number of image generations that you want to create. Remember that each image takes up two credits. And here we have the text guidance scale, which is how strongly your prompt is weighted. So the higher that is, then the more influence the prompt will have on the image. I believe because I'm on the standard plan, I get to choose the no watermark and private mode for these generations. And down here, you can choose negative prompts. So you can add descriptions of things that you don't want to be in the image. So to start off with, I'll just click on this little wand down here and it gives you some example prompts. So I'll just click on this one and see what it does. So it's got a person with his hands in their pockets, standing with one hand on his hip and the other hand on the hips. Doesn't quite make sense, but let's see what it does. So generate. And it's generated two images that look exactly like our character. But it feels like they've just kind of copy and pasted one of the images that we already uploaded. But as you can actually see here, they've actually put his hand inside of the pocket, which we never uploaded to the training model. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's try something a bit more creative with the image to see what it can do. Let's try a person playing a guitar. Okay, and it did a pretty good job. So as you can see, our character is playing the guitar and it looks really good. It's a bit of weirdness with his hands there, but there's nothing stopping you from taking these images and then editing little errors in them. So I'd probably edit that finger out there. And here he is sitting down playing a guitar and it's done a really good job. It's kind of kept the same clothing and everything that we used in the model for training. So yeah, that's pretty impressive. Now, as you may notice, the backgrounds are just white, which were like the images that we uploaded. So how do we get backgrounds into these images? Now, one way you could do it is you could take these images, download them, cut him out, and then create a background using AI or your own background and then paste him in. That's one way to do it. But let's see if we can get the character with a background using just one prompt. So for this prompt, I've used inside of a library, a person standing up holding a book. And then I've put inside of a library again, just to reiterate the location. So we got some really good results back. We've got a character here standing in a library with bookshelves around him, and it looks great. And the cool thing is actually the environments are in the same style as the character. So this character is a very flat vectorized look with not much detail and as you can see, the background with the library, it's all flat. It's got the same kind of colors. Um, it just feels natural. It's not like it's put a realistic background in or anything. So yeah, really happy with that. The resolution isn't super high, but you can always take these images and then put them into a upscaler and make them higher res. This one didn't turn out too well, but I think it's because the character's been shrunk down and it's kind of lost some of his features. But for the first prompt, I'm really impressed with that. All right, so now let's have a look at changing his expression. So I've used a similar prompt, but in this one, I've put a person holding a book standing up with a smile on his face. And let's see if it works. And again, it did a fantastic job. He's clearly got a very happy expression on his face. He's holding a small book, but it's a book still. And he's in the library and it all looks like a cohesive image. And again, smiling expression. The background isn't as great in this one as it's got a lot of white, but it still works. Now let's try an angry expression. So I just wanted something odd. I've put inside a train, a person sitting down with an angry look on his face, holding a glass of water, and then inside a train at the end again. I feel like it's good to reiterate the location just so it knows. And here we have John looking angry. It's done a really good job. Even though it's added a weird little artifact on his crotch there, but you just edit that out. And here he is looking angry with a glass of water in his hand. So it's done a really good job at implementing the object I told it to have in the image, which is really awesome. And maybe John has a pet, so let's have him walking a dog through the park. 
So I've put in a park, a person is walking a dog looking happy. Park landscape. A couple of these have the white backgrounds, which don't look too bad. But this one looks incredible. It's got the nice background with a beautiful landscape of the park. And John looking happy walking the dog. And to see how far I could push this character with its consistency in different locations, I actually got ChatGPT to write me a really short story about John going on an adventure. So here's a little video with all images created in LensGo. John, a city office worker, yearned for adventure. One day, he swapped his tie for a backpack and set off. In the Amazon, he kayaked through vibrant jungles. Across deserts and over mountains, he roamed, seeking the thrill of the unknown. His greatest discovery came in the tranquility of the Himalayas, where peace intertwined with adventure. John's tales of exploration inspired others, and though he found serenity, the call of new dawns kept his heart wandering. It did an incredible job with the prompts I gave it. From putting him in an office environment, making him look sad, to wandering through the desert, I even added a backpack to him. And it also changes his clothes if you want. So for the office one, I put wearing a tie and then it actually put a suit on him so it looks like he's working in the office. And having going up a mountain, kayaking through the river, it's done an incredible job. And all the backgrounds look seamless and as if they're from the same art style, which is very impressive. I'll make sure to leave a document with all the prompts I used in this video down in the description box below. Now let's do the same thing, but with a character I made using AI. I created this character in Midjourney. This is the original character sheet that AI generated. Then I took that image into Photoshop, or you can use a free alternative called Photopea, and just cut out those segments and create individual images. As you can see here, I've got nine individual images. I've got one with the frontal pose, one with the side poses, one with the back pose, one with three poses in it, and then close-up views of the face, side of the faces, and back of the head. To speed things up, I did some shortcuts. So with the face looking right, I just flipped it around and said face looking left as well. And I trained the model just on these nine images alone, which is very different from the previous model as that used 34 images. So let's see what kind of character consistency we can get with just nine images in a trained model. And as well, you can see I've labeled each image with the description of what's in the image. I've already trained this model, so I'll just come up to this model option here and click on Alex. Okay, so let's try a simple prompt. If I click the wand tool down here, I'll just click on this one. A girl with long hair in profile and looking off to the side with an unkept hair color. Kind of weird, but let's just see what it generates. And it's generated two really nice images. They look very similar to the ones that we uploaded. Now let's try something a bit more creative. I'm actually going to use one of the previous prompts we used on the last character, just to see how different it is. So I've got inside of a library, a person holding a book, standing up with a smile on her face inside of a library. It's done a great job. As you can see, this is our character. She's inside of a library holding a book there. She looks happy. And this one's really nice as well. It's She's holding the book. There's a, some errors there with the book, but you can clearly see she's in the library. The only problem with these images I'm noticing is the backgrounds are coming out gray. And I think that's because all of the characters I uploaded had a gray background. So maybe when you're uploading yours, just make sure to have a white background like I did with the previous character. And for this next one, I've gone with a longer prompt. So I've put playing the piano, a person is playing piano at a restaurant. She looks happy playing the piano. High quality, HD, 8K, high resolution. I added those things just to see if it would make a difference. And here is our character playing the piano. She's not quite playing the piano there, but um, it doesn't look too bad. They are quite close up images, so let's see if we can get her a bit further out. Now I'm trying another prompt that I used previously, which was climbing a mountain, a person climbing a rocky mountain, looking happy, mountain landscape. I just want to see if the landscape changes much and doesn't have that gray in the background. Okay, cool. So here's our character standing on a huge rock, it looks like. 
It looks pretty good. And there is our character looking out on the horizon on this rock. I noticed a lot of the backgrounds for Alex were looking a bit too grey, and I think that's because all of the images I trained the model with had a grey background. So what I'll do now is I'll take those images that we trained the model on, and I will change the background to white and see how that looks. And I've got a really cool tip here. You can use the images of your character that you've been generating, download them from LensGo, cut them out, and then add them to your trained images for that character. So I've gone from 9 images from my initial training model with Alex, to now having 17 images of Alex in that training model, just by taking some of the images I generated using LensGo, and then putting them back into the training model. So the more images you can add into the training model, will help with generating images as it will have more reference images. So you can keep generating and then adding more into your model. Let's have a look at how this new model generates images, and if they are better than the model before. And I'm incredibly impressed with the results I got. So here's a great image of Alex sitting down and playing the guitar. And for this prompt I just used, inside a studio, a person is playing the guitar, sitting on a wooden chair, looking happy, inside a studio. And it looks fantastic. And in this other one, she's drinking coffee in a cafe. And here she's jumping in the air eating food, kayaking down a river, and it's actually placed her in a kayak and got that nice reflection in the river. And here you can see it's added a backpack as she's wandering through the desert. And again, playing with expressions. So I wanted Alex to have an angry expression, like we did with the previous character. So she's sitting on a train, looking angry, with a glass of water. And I think it did a really good job. Here's a very heroic pose on a mountain. Here's another kind of similar pose, but with a sword. And I've changed her outfit in this one, so I've put her in a suit, looking sad, while working in an office. And we've reached the end of this video. I think this is such an incredibly powerful tool. It's amazing how you can take any character, one that you've created from scratch, or AI, and get them to be consistent in different poses and scenes, it just opens up a whole new world for exploring storytelling and other areas. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you've learned anything, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And please comment below with any thoughts or suggestions you've got for future videos. We have other videos covering character consistency, so if you'd like to check out another one, click on the image you can see on screen right now to learn some incredible character consistency tips and tricks. You won't want to miss it.